hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back i am incredibly excited to be recording this video i'm going to be talking about mark cross and specifically their handbags just before i went to the us i put out a community post asking my viewers and subscribers to let me know which american luxury brands they wanted me to take a look at and mark cross without a doubt was my most requested brand every other comment or message was mark cross please and coupled with the fact that when i got to their flagship store in um, new york it's on madison avenue the young man who served me was an exceptional ambassador for the brand he's the best they could have had he was engaging he was attentive he knew his product very well what i would expect but most of all, he was incredibly professional the whole time I was there. He didn't drop a ball on anything. So he has made researching and recording this video incredibly enjoyable for me. I'm Anesu Sagonda, and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on quality, under-the-radar brands, then my content is geared towards you. Mark Cross was established in Boston in 1845 by Henry Cross, and he named the brand after his only son, Mark. He created the brand because he wanted to produce the finest luxury goods for your horse and buggy rider. So think of saddles, harnesses, and bridles. Over time, he increased the range of products and it very quickly became the quintessential American luxury lifestyle brand. And then late 1800s, he sold the brand and was bought by the Murphy family, Patrick Murphy, who worked very closely with his son, Gerald. They expanded the brand, previously had just one store in Boston, they opened another one in New York, and then a number of international stores, one in London, one in Paris, and one in Milan. And what that meant with international travel is they were being exposed to luxury goods that weren't available or even known in the United States. Uh, think of your finest china, crystal, for example. And that helped to elevate and gain traction for the brand, introducing new luxury uh, goods to the American market. And then in 1921, uh, Gerald and his wife, Sarah, moved to Cap d'Antibes in the south of France. And they mixed with the good and the great, entertaining the likes of Ernest Hemingway, uh, Cole Porter, F. Scott Fitzgerald and his wife, Zelda, Pablo Picasso, for example. And the celebrities were totally enchanted by the Murphy's bohemian lifestyle. And that helped them uh, gain tr even more traction for the brand. Gerald bought even more products, new products to the American market. Think of cigarette cases, additional luggage items, jeweled evening cases. And that just helped to elevate and cement Mark Cross's position as one of the leading luxury brands of that time. And by 1934, Gerald was pretty much running the brand on his own. Fast forward a few years later, he very successfully placed uh, a Mark Cross bag, the overnight bag, in a movie directed by one of the most critically acclaimed movie directors of that time, Alfred Hitchcock. His movie, Rear Window, from 1954. And Grace Kelly, one of the leading actresses of that time, carried the Mark Cross overnight bag. Gerald continued with the brand, did very well, and then eventually he sold the brand, but he stayed on until he retired in 1955. The brand changed hands a couple more times, and then it eventually closed mid-1990s. It reopened again uh, in 2011, and it's been trading since. The current creative director is Rebecca Mendoza. She comes from Calvin Klein, and she's also had her own brand, Rye. And like previous creative directors, her focus is very much on producing styles that are heavily inspired by the vintage archives. They have one store on Madison Avenue, their flagship store, um, and they also retail through a number of other concessions globally. 
they used to be in Selfridges in London, but the concession closed down last year. But I hear they're coming back via Netta Porter. They produce a number of collections when it comes to their bags for both men and women. I'm only going to be focused on women's handbags, as I mentioned before. And I'm going to focus on six iconic styles for women. And then I'm also going to focus on another six, seven styles from their classic collection that they continue year in, year out. Uh, so a total of about 12, 13 different styles I'll talk about uh, and give a brief overview at the end i will give you my thoughts on the brand how i think it compares to other brands as i've been asked um, but it's a fantastic brand and i enjoyed my time in the flagship store all mark cross bags are made in italy and they're still working with the same factories that they worked with in the past and all the bags are made using italian calf skin leather different variations of the leather there's saffiano there's tumbled soft grain calfskin, brushed calfskin, smooth calfskin, Dover box calfskin, and quilted calfskin. Hardware, either gold plated brass hardware or palladium plated brass hardware. And most of the bags come with the grace lock and the signature red napper lining on the inside. The first iconic bag is the rear window, which I mentioned a little earlier. The rear window was designed by Gerald Murphy on request from Alfred Hitchcock for Grace Kelly to carry in the movie, Rear Window. It's an elegant top handle bag. You open the bag, on one side you have a zipped compartment, and then on the other side you have a mirror. Close the bag, turn it over, and you have on the underside um, studs to protect the base of the bag. You will find most Mark Cross bags have uh, the studs on the underside to protect the bag, unless it's a slouchy bag like um, the Johnny or the Fay Market Tote, which I'll talk about um, in the classic section. The second iconic bag is the Grace. Comes in a couple of sizes, very much inspired by the rear window uh, bag. Small box bag, smaller bag, great as a cocktail bag, uh, special occasion bag, slightly bigger everyday bag depending on what you carry, but it's just a different shape to your conventional handbag. A slightly quirkier but still elegant, a beautiful bag to carry. Open the bag, you have on the inside a zipped compartment and then nothing on the other side. Turn the bag over of course and you have the, the studded base to protect the bottom of the bag. The third bag is the Murphy. The Murphy is um, a sophisticated everyday bag. Comes with the top handle. You can add an adjustable detachable stripe strap, which a lot of the Mark Cross bags have the option of as well. It has two compartments and then a clasp to secure the middle, uh, to secure the bag, and that's on in the middle of the bag. It's a bag that's very similar in design to the Pannier from Prada, which I particularly like. The Prada one comes in Saffiano, a fairly rigid, thick leather. Uh, but as I mentioned in the hierarchy of handbag series, Prada and Miu Miu shoes are fantastic, but their handbags, the wear and tear is not very good. And I'd always recommend their bags more as occasion bags that you just bring out once in a while. The wear and tear is not good at all and you will not get longevity if you wear their bags day in day out typically. I really like the pannier shape and I've been umming and ahhing but I'd be more inclined to go with the Mark Cross uh, ver uh, version, the Murphy. The only real difference is, is they use the tumbled soft grain so it's a softer slouchier look. It's not as rigid as the pannier. When it comes to the quality of the leather of the Mark Cross, fantastic. And I would actually say the Mark Cross craftsmanship is better than the Prada. Um, I would go for that any day. The wear and tear will be a lot better than the, the Prada bags. The fourth iconic bag is the Madeleine. The Madeleine is not named after any particular person, significant person from their history, but the, the M shape on the front of the bag, um, they went for a name, it was Madeleine, but it was something, it had to be a name that started with M. The bag very much features an elegantly curving closure, and that's inspired by the key hood shape that's on every Mark Cross bag. It's a top handle bag. You have the option of adding an adjustable detachable strap, um, and you can dress it down, make it a little more casual. The next bag is the Benchley. The Benchley is named after Robert Benchley, the humorist. 
and it's an exact replica of a bag from the 1980s 1990s in terms of the style and also the hardware that was used on the bag um, a little compartment style bag it's a little cube a little sh uh, a little container bag um, comes in a couple of sizes dress it up dress it down carry it as a top handle fun bag for a cocktail a wedding a special occasion where you just want something that's a little different and then the final is the 1845 trunk again another exact replica of a style from 1904 it also comes with a chain and leather strap which you can add to the bag carry it as a top handle or add the strap and you can carry it as a crossbody bag moving on to the classic bags the first is the fay market toad a very easy to wear elevated shopping bag instead of your typical cloth bag you're out and about food shopping or doing your bits and you just want something to put things in fay macrame toad it's pretty the macrame um, an elevated shopping bag the second is the johnny comes in macrame it also comes in raffia it's a drawstring carry-all smaller size a cocktail bag out and about in the south of france um, you want something a little different for an event or the slightly bigger size an elevated weekend bag the next bag is the christy it's a chic and polished top handle bag also comes with um, an adjustable detachable strap so you can dress it down um, as a crossbody easy to wear everyday bag it also comes with the new design of the mar cross knot motif on the front next bag is the maddy the maddy is a variation of the madeleine it's lighter weight in construction it's minimal hardware and it only comes in the tumbled soft gray the next bag is the madison crossbody another easy to wear everyday casual bag it comes with the top handle option or you have the adjustable strap added to that uh, and the double zip compartment and then the next bag is the murphy variation of the murphy i spoke about it's the murphy zip and it's just one compartment with a zip on top and then it has just the one strap you can carry it over the shoulder or it sits very comfortably in the crook of your arm and then the final bag is open the window another variation of the rear window bag the only real difference is um, on the mirror instead of being on the inside is on the outside Attached on the outside and covering the mirror is leather windows. You open the windows and you expose them. the mirror, you open the window to the world. That's a very strong selection of um, the iconic bags and some of their classic bags. Mark Cross sits very comfortably within the premium core that I've spoken about in my hierarchy of handbag seas. I'm going to attach the video above. And in the, in the premium core selection, I have a very strong number of brands. Um, where would I place Mark Cross within premium core? Very comfortably within the middle. If I was to split premium core into two halves, I would put Mark Cross into the second half. And that's because I've got some strong competitors I've spoken about and I will continue to talk about in the future when I talk about other brands. But there are a number of things I want to talk about, um, specifically about Mark Cross in a second and why I've placed them in the second half. Uh, but regardless, Mark Cross is a solid brand when it comes to the quality of the leathers they use and the craftsmanship. It's absolutely fantastic. But there are a number of things that niggle and I'll address in a second. When I get asked about Mark Cross, one of the common questions I get is how does it compare alongside brands such as Moina, Velextra and Delvaux? Those three brands, Moina, Davo, Velextra, are typically the top brands in their respective countries. So Moina, I'd place alongside Hermes as one of the two top brands. There's uh, another one I'm going to fit into that equation a little later that I'll talk about uh, once I've made it out to Paris. Delvo is the top Belgian brand and you have Velextra, which is one of the top Italian brands. There are a couple of other brands um, I would say are also the top uh, when it comes to Italian brands, but I'll talk about those again when I've been out to Italy again later this year. I would also throw into that equation uh, Loewe, the top Spanish brand, and I would also throw into their Bali, the top Swiss brand. How does Mark Cross compare? Well, in comparison to Mark, to Moina and Delvo, there's no comparison. Moina and Delvo are a higher level of luxury. They are 
super premium so you are buying into absolutely everything the quality the prestige the heritage the exclusivity and so forth and that is very distinctly reflected in the quality of the leathers that's used and also the, the exceptional craftsmanship those two brands are far superior when compared to Mark Cross they do not compare at all but when you throw in Velextra and also Loewe, for example, they are same level of luxury as Mark Cross. I would say Velextra and uh, Loewe are superior, not far superior, but superior to Mark Cross. When you look at the quality of the leathers used and also the craftsmanship, there is a difference. When you look at everything, the, the stitching, you look at the leathers, you look at um, the hardware, you look at the text that's written on the hardware, you look at the edge coating, you look at the color, absolutely everything. It's superior to Mark Cross. But when you throw in Bali, and Bali, as I mentioned in the hierarchy of handbag series, and I also spoke specifically about Bali, I'll include both of those videos. Bali is actually a level below, a luxury level below Mark Cross, which is premium core. They are accessible core. So bags that are typically priced from about, about 950 pounds, 1,000 pounds through to about 1,500 pounds. Bali is a brand where you are getting amazing quality for a steel. They should actually be more expensive considering what you, what you get. Bali bags are also very similar to Mark Cross in that they're produced from Italian, very good quality Italian uh, leather. And uh, depending on the style, Bali bags are either made in Italy or they're made in Switzerland. Exceptional craftsmanship. It's a brand that punts very much under the radar, as I mentioned, but it's absolutely mighty when you consider the quality you're getting from Bali, the longevity. And I'm getting a lot of messages from people saying, thank you for introducing me to Bali because it's an amazing brand. I like it. I'm happy with what I've bought. I would put Bali and Mark Cross alongside each other in terms of the quality of the leathers used and also the craftsmanship. Recently, one of my subscribers said, when you look at brands, when you talk about brands, can you just let us know, does it look expensive? When I look at Moina, Delvo, Velextra, those three brands, any bag they produce looks expensive. It has the wow factor. You look at it, you touch it, you smell it, you feel it. You can see, you can just feel the quality of the leather. You look at the stitching, the way it's been re reinforced. Everything about the bags, um, the edge coating I've mentioned from uh, Velextra, which is amazing. The Torion uh, leather from Moina. I mean, Everything about those three brands is amazing. They look expensive. All their bags look a million dollars. But Mark Cross doesn't look expensive. It looks good. It looks solid. It looks robust. Their bags look fantastic, but they don't look super expensive. Um, the price that they charge, I would pay be when I consider the quality of the leathers and the craftsmanship. There are a couple of things that niggle. Looking at uh, brand equity, I don't, I don't want to make this too intense, but their bags go on, on sale. They're literally half the price. So that affects what would be my perception and loyalty to the brand. Why would I spend £2,000 when I know at the end of the season the bag will be half price? It's a brand that's relatively unknown and they're very much trading on their history and the fact that they do use good leathers and uh, the craftsmanship is fantastic. But that is something that niggles a little to me when I consider brands and the value and the perception of them and so forth. But it's a solid brand. I would look at it and think, oh, this is nice. This is good. I like it. But if I looked at something from Moina, whether it's the wheel bag, the Voyage, the Flory, uh, the Flory with their marketry, I'd be like, oh my goodness, this is next level. The, 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 the feel of the leather, the way it's been made, the hardware, the text, it's amazing. The other thing I also want to throw in with Mark Cross, because when I look at Moina, Dalvova, Lecture, it's the complete product, everything, the leather, the craftsmanship, the edge coating, um, the color of the, the, the way the bag's been colored and so forth. With Mark Cross, the text uh, on, the, on their bags, for example, on the charms, they have a ladder charm, a, la a ladder pendant. And I actually had to ask the young man, what does this say? Uh, on the website, uh, open the window, it's legible. They're using professional photographers with amazing equipment, so it really brings it out. But when you look at that pendant and you try and read, open the window, it's very difficult to actually read that. You should be able to just pick something up and you can see what it says straight away. You don't have to amana or ask. 
you would never get that with Moina, Delvo or Velextra, for example. The text on there, for example, the Velextra hardware, they have tiny Velextra written on the hardware. You can see it straight away. The text is classic, it's clean, it's neat. Whereas Mark Cross, it's all swirly whirly. And as the brand said to me, it's part of the charm, the lure, the appeal of the brand. But it just takes away from being able to read and say, what is this? What does it say? And then they use um, a foil stamp logo. And you can't see how it looks straight away. Um, you have to figure out, what does it say? Oh, it says Mark Cross. And Mark Cross is not a brand that's very well known. So you're trying to figure out, what is this? What's this brand about? And I remember last year when I first explored the brand in the United Kingdom and I went into Selfridges and the bags were on sale because they were being discontinued for whatever the reason. And the bag that I looked at was not the best representation for the brand. It was a light colored quilted leather bag. And it was the worst example for them because it was a very light color, a creamy beige color. It was grubby from everybody touching it. Um, the text wasn't even illegible anymore. There were, I think there was even a foil stamp on there, although I know the foil stamps are on the Murphy zips. But it just didn't look good. The quilted, the grubby quilted light color, the quilted leather itself, it all looked cheap. It didn't look good. It didn't represent the brand well. The quilted leather looks better the darker the color. Um, the foil stamp doesn't look good. It needs to be crisp. It needs to be sharp. You need to just look at it and you can see what it is straight away. And then you have brands like, for example, I spoke about recently, Laura Piano with the Cessia bag. They have their logo um, embossed within the bag. That looks sharp. That looks the part. Everything about the Cessia is amazing. When you touch the leather, you look at the stitching. Um, you look at uh, the hardware, the edge coating. Everything comes together very well. And if you have text on a bag, you can't even read it. And you're like, what does this say? It takes away from it. It takes away from just that whole overall appeal. But I don't know, maybe I'm being um, a, a little too harsh on the brand. But if you want to play with the big boys and girls, then absolutely everything needs to come together at a very high standard. I'm sure you noticed halfway through the video that the background scenery changed. I'm currently in a property called Meadowgate. It's located five hours from London in a village called Welcome in the county of Devon. And I'm here for a week for a birthday party. It's a wonderfully remote part of England. Incredibly quiet, except for the occasional bird song and sheep bleating every so often. An abundance of just green grass, rolling hills, loads of fresh air. It's just been an amazing place for rest, relaxation, and of course, quality time. As always, any further questions about Mark Cross, do let me know in the comments down below. But please do consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future content.